Edward Joseph, who is the former executive director of the National Council on U.S.-Libya Relations. Edward, thanks for being with us. When you weigh reports that Haftar is on the back foot with threats to Turkish positions, is this conflict winding up or winding down rather or ramping up? It certainly uh, put uh, General Haftar on a very serious setback. There's no question about that. And it's, uh, it's not clear at all whether it's actually winding down because this offensive that is Turkish-backed and actually Turkish-run, which is a very critical point, these are Turkish soldiers who are operating here. These aren't Libyan soldiers. It's Turkish soldiers uh, who are actually the keys here. Uh, it, uh, Turkey still has a ways to go. These are, this is a significant setback for Haftar and the LNA uh, to have lost the airbase, Awatia Air Base. Uh, but they're still in Tarhuna, the town of Tarhuna, and it will take uh, time uh, for Turkish forces and uh, Libyan forces to dislodge him there. So that will take some time. But at, as it stands, uh, the initiative is all with Tripoli, with uh, Turkey, and Haftar has a serious uh, situation trying to sustain uh, his resupply. So uh, Turkey certainly has the advantage, but the game is not completely over yet. Please. How much of a difference maker has Turkey made in all of this, and what are the prospects right now for a ceasefire, which seems to be now in Haftar's interest? Uh, well, let's deal with that now. There, the problem in many conflicts, in Libya in particular, is it's very difficult to get a sustained ceasefire, even an agreement to ceasefire, when one side has a big advantage, as is the case now. So the momentum, the initiative, is all with Turkey. And of course, Haftar is on the back foot. There, there would be no reason for Tripoli uh, and Turkey to pursue a, uh, a ceasefire that would allow Haftar to resupply. So that's uh, highly unlikely in this uh, scenario. Uh, it, the role of Turkey here, of course, has been uh, critical. There's uh, no question that without the Turkish support, uh, Haftar would be still very close uh, to uh, perhaps causing a collapse in Tripoli. And that has uh, dramatically reversed since the Turkish intervention begun in January. But Turkey still has a ways to go, as I mentioned. The key question for Turkey is, will it continue not only to dislodge Haftar from uh, Tarhuna and Western Tripolitania, but will they continue to go to the oil-rich Sirt Basin, uh, which is a, a much more difficult military venture for Turkey and a much more significant commitment? Remember, Turkey is also exposed in Syria, and there's always the potential there for a major offensive in Idlib, which, of course, would change the dynamics there and force Turkey to focus on that theater as well. Please. Edward, depending on who you ask, the U.S. is either quietly involved in this conflict or they're not involved at all, uh, especially when you take into consideration the fact that in April of last year, the president did make a phone call to Khalifa Haftar in support of his activity in Libya. How does the U.S. view all of this? And in all sincerity, is it considering any sort of action in support of Haftar's forces? Uh, again, let me take the second part of that question. Uh, it's highly unlikely that the U.S. would uh, take such an action. But it isn't unlikely that other countries would take such an action on behalf of Haftar. Just for the U.S., the U.S. simply doesn't see that it has uh, significant interests enough to be directly involved, uh, surely not interests enough to be militarily involved in that way. The military involvement in Libya by the United States is restricted to counterterrorism operations, not operations on behalf of Haftar, who is, uh, the U.S. is not allied with. And uh, at the same time, the U.S. does have concerns 
a Turkish, outright Turkish victory uh, presents complications. You have to remember, the forces that are allied there in Tripoli, it's not just this uh, government of a national accord, but you have an array of groups there, including extreme Islamist groups allied there with the government in Tripoli. And some of them are uh, terrorist groups. So this is very much a concern for the United States and for European allies of the United States and as well Haftar's supporters, principally Egypt and the United Arab Emirates. So those are the question here is whether those countries would, not the United States, but would any of those countries mount uh, a, a military support of Haftar, potentially, for example, direct military adventure, uh, intervention by Egypt, which unlike Turkey, uh, is right next door and can easily uh, uh, support the logistics involved for a military intervention. So those are the concerns that Turkey has to consider uh, as it proceeds uh, on its uh, march against uh, General Haftar. Please. Edward Joseph, we really appreciate you being with us. Thanks for that.